eight hours per week doing $100 per hour wage activities is the identical equivalent of 40 hours of $20 per hour. Like, let's do the math on that. 80 times 100, sorry, eight times 100, $800. 40 times 20 is $800, right? And so this is where it's the mathematical equivalent and this is why we're working so much, because we are doing the things we shouldn't be doing in our business. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another awesome episode of the Life Inner Show. I'm your host, Jason Wojo. On the Life Inner Show, we help people make more, work less, and live awesome lives. I am joined by Polish Peter, my co-host. What's up, bro? Hey, man. So this was a pretty awesome business builder virtual event that we just come out of. You want to share yeah. some little glimpse of it for you guys yeah. out of this particular event. So let me give you guys some context. So Life Inner has two events. One's called the Get Life Getaway, where we focus exclusively on helping you figure out your dream life, your ideal schedule, how much money it takes to, to live that, like what's the action plan, all those things. And then we have our Business Builder Workshop. Now we just, and by the way, the Business Builder Workshop is where we help you create a business to support that life that you just said you want, right? So we're going to talk about how to, how to have time freedom, how to have... Um, financial freedom, emotional freedom, all these other things in, around your business as it pertains to how, how you run that and how you structure it. And so we just had a virtual over Zoom business builder workshop and it was awesome. There's a lot of, lot of great discussions, a lot of great mm -hmm. breakthroughs for people. And so in this episode, we're gonna give you a small glimpse of what that event was like. Now, the event was had, you know, let me think, uh, math, easy math, man. We're looking at probably 18 hours together uh, on, that, on, the, on the workshop, so you're gonna get a, a snippet, okay, a snippet of this. And in this section, we're going to talk about how do you examine what you do in your business? How do you choose where you focus your energy, your time, your effort? What are the roles you should be doing and what are the ones you should get around and get away from? So if you are a business owner or actually, you know, person who's looking to do business or in life and you feel like you got a whole bunch of fires that you're going after, if you feel like you can't make a right decision, which way to go, if you feel stuck, if you feel like, you know, what am I going to do next? How am I going to grow this thing? This is the episode to listen to because we basically answer that question during this particular segment of the Business Builder Workshop. Let's do it, man. Here's, let's go right to that segment right now. Enjoy. First of all, has anyone in here, just by a show of hands, real quickly, give me a, give me a virtual hands up or a, or a thumbs up, who here has ever heard of the 80-20 rule? Almost everybody. Almost everybody. So if you haven't heard of it, the 80-20 rule essentially says that 80% of your results come from 20% of your inputs. So 80% of your outputs come from 20% of your inputs. Let's use, let's use a couple examples. 80% of your profits come from 20% of your customers. 80% of your marketing results are from 20% of your copy. Uh, in this case, let's use this example. 80% of your results in your business come from 20% of your efforts. Okay. By extension, 80% of the money we make in the business is a result of 20% of the time we put in. If we take 20% of a 40-hour work week, which is on the low end of typical, you know, most business owners are working 50 plus, 60 plus. 20% of 40 hours, who knows? Put it in the chat. What's 20% of 40? Calculate the result. <laughs> eight, you're right, Josue. Susie's right. It's eight hours. So what does that mean? Hang with me here. 80% of the results in your business are coming from eight hours of work per week. Let that sink in for a second. Now, those eight hours are the real hours, are the real things you are doing in your business, not the crap that you're calling work. It's not the busy stuff. It's not the, it's not the, the stuff where we're kind of like, we think we're work. Listen, you all know what I'm talking about here. This is the real work we're doing is producing 80% of the results. And so when you see a calendar that only allows you 10 or 20 hours per week, I'd say on average, most life in areas are somewhere 20, 25 hours per week, maybe 30. They can still live their vision. Um, maybe some 10, 
right? And so 80% of your results are coming from eight hours a week. You can probably see why this becomes a whole lot more feasible. Let me give you a couple other examples here. There is a study in 2017 that looked at 1,989 office workers that showed out of an eight hour workday, only two hours and 53 minutes of work was actually being done. So let's round that to three hours a week. I wanna, I wanna make sure everybody heard that. They tracked actual employees to see how much they work. Out of an eight hour workday, it came out to two hours and 53 minutes. So it's three hours times five, that's 15 hours a week. 15 hours a week was literally, literally producing 100% of that employee's output for the week. So this is where I wanna challenge you with some love here that you can make this happen. Now, like I said before, yes, you have to learn how to do things differently, but it is a possibility that it's within everyone's grasp right here. The last thing I'll say is this, and this one maybe bring it home for you. You're going on a trip Saturday morning, you got a cruise, you got a flight, you're taking a vacation, a trip, and you get more done that Friday than the previous Monday through Thursday. Has this happened to anyone ever in the past? Of course it has. I see the smiles. I see the nods. Why? Because you had to. You had a reason to make this happen. And so this is where I want to encourage you. This is within your grasp. And again, I'm not saying you have to go right to this extent of a calendar. You don't have to work 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week even. If you're working 60, see if you can get it down to 55. If you're working 80, see if you can get it to 70, right? Whatever it is, like start with small increments and start putting those things on the calendar to move you in this direction. Is everyone cool with that? Give me a thumbs up. Give me, give me some sort of notice that everyone's clear. Good, 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 good. Okay. All right. Awesome, guys. So let's move on now. Um, I want to talk about what you should do in the business and what you might consider as being your ideal roles. And we're going to kind of get into this because this is the second part, the second high level item in your vision. We're going to extend uh, this conversation much, much more over the next couple of days. But here's a couple of things to help you understand when we move into your business breakdown, where you should be focusing. And so what this looks like, early in your business, you will have things that you don't like, that you're not good at, and that aren't the best use of your time. We talked about that already, but it's okay. It's a phase, but we got to get out of that phase. It's okay temporarily, but you have to get free of being a one-person show as quickly as possible. If you want to move through the vision steps through the stages of maturation. If you don't, again, it's okay. But my encouragement to you is to consider this. Here's a, here's a very powerful tool to do this. This is called the Eisenhower Matrix. It was made popular by Stephen Covey in his book, The um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, and it, essentially, if you look at the x-axis and the y-axis, it categorizes items by important and urgent. So not important is the bottom left quadrant, Important is the, sorry, not important is the is the is the is the uh, the y axis, and urgent and not urgent is the x axis. And so you can see in quadrant one, which is the upper left, you see the things that are urgent and important. In quadrant two, you see the important but not urgent. Quadrant three, bottom left, you see not important but urgent, and then not urgent and not important. So this is a really good indicator and a guide for where you should be putting your business attention. So here's the, here, and the reason why that, and, and by the way, everybody on here, when you're looking at this, put it in the chat right now, where do you think you should focus? Like which, which, which ones, which one or which ones do you think you should focus on? Put it in the chat right now, what you think quadrant, number one, two, three, or four, you think we should focus on? Two, two, one, two. Yep. Yep. Love it. Love it. So <clears throat> one and two. Yep. So awesome. Awesome answers. Awesome answers. So these are, you guys got it. Now, I'm not going to ask you to put this in the chat, but based on how you run your business, where are you spending your time? Okay. And so that's just a moment of reflection that you can consider. The answer is primarily quadrant two. And the reason is, is because that is where you're doing the planning. Now, if you have something that's urgent and important, you absolutely need to make that a, a priority. But here's the cool thing. And so, yes, you have to, have to, have to 
get done the quadrant one activities. But the more you focus in quadrant two, the less urgent things will pop up for you because now you've planned for them proactively and you'll have less things that surface as fires in your business. And so the more time you're able to spend in the planning stage and the more time you're you're spending building processes and, and infrastructure, the less urgency will, will surface in your business. Um, clearly, we know that the distractions and the time-wasting things we want to, want to uh, avoid, uh, with quadrant four being the biggest time wasters, right? Now, let me give you just a little bit of a an extension on this. And this is just a little bit of a preview of where we're going to go uh, in the next couple of days here is this. Here's another way to look at it. Urgent, important, quadrant one of the things we do. The planning is in quadrant two. The delegation, quadrant three. And this would also be somewhere we can also uh, automate. And then quadrant four is where we want to eliminate. We want to get those things off of our plate completely, right? So these are these are how we kind of want to start thinking about our, our businesses. Um, so here's another way to consider what specifically you do. Here's a bunch of questions for you to start thinking about moving in the direction of your highest leverage, your highest use in your business. Like, what am I really good at? What do I have previous experience in and already know a lot about? What do I enjoy? What do I find fulfilling? What do I see myself doing on a perfect day? What does my business need most, right? These are all examples of the things that you can focus on in the context of that Eisenhower matrix. Now, this again is an evolution. When you're starting off in your business, you're gonna be doing everything. Like just, just be okay with that. But eventually you gotta start moving towards what you're best at. Um, and so that's something to really, really consider. One area that I want you to consider focusing on based on these questions is your highest leverage activities. And so we're going to define leverage. And we're, most of us, if, especially if you're in business, you're in real estate, you usually think of leverage as money, but I want to use it differently. I want to use it in terms of abilities and skills. And so leverage, we're going to define as the impact produced for the business over the amount of time invested. And so what can move the needle the quickest, the most with the least amount of effort? And so leverage is the impact produced over time invested. And one way to consider moving your needle forward in your business is focus on the income generating activities that are the most important. This becomes more important the less time you want to spend in the business or the more money you want to make. And so this is why it's really, really important to realize, like if you're not doing these things in your business, you got to hire somebody else to do them or have automation to do them. And so you still got to use this stepwise process to get yourself out of the business. But if you're not doing it, somebody else has to do it. And so this is where I want to encourage you to really focus on for you as a business owner, what are the biggest things that I can do in my business to allow me to really move the needle? Far too many of us are doing the admin tasks. We're doing the supporting tasks. We're doing all of the things that really don't add a, someone has to do it, but they're not adding a ton of value to the business, right? The bottom line. And so you got to start moving yourself out of that. Um, and I got a lot of pushback on this where people are like, well, my customers want to talk to me. They don't want to talk to Sally or, or John or Mike or, 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 you know, and so this is where like, we got to start making that step though, especially as you want to step, either you want to make more money or you want to step out of the business. Uh, let me give you some simple math on this. So check this out. This is, this is absolutely like absolutely nuts if you think about it. So eight hours per week doing $100 per hour wage activities is the identical equivalent of 40 hours of $20 per hour. Like, let's do the math on that. 80 times 100, sorry, eight times 100, $800. 40 times 20 is $800, right? And so this is where it's the mathematical equivalent. And this is why we're working so much because we are doing the things we shouldn't be doing in our business, right? And this is where you have to learn not only what the highest leverage activities are in your business, but how to do them and invest in developing those high leverage skills. All right. Is everybody clear on that? Like this is where business, like, listen, you have to start moving in this direction if you're going to be successful and only work the amount of time you want to work. The reality is that you're costing yourself a lot of money if you're doing things that aren't your high leverage activities. You know, we think that we're saving, you know, 150 bucks by 
um, going out and changing a toilet in one of our properties or by delivering those those uh, those supplies to the to the property or whatever. But you're not. You're not. You're costing yourself a ton of money because you should be doing something way more important in the business. Um, you need to be doing the right things in your business, not everything. Let me give you a an example of this. This is from uh, a book from Perry Marshall called 80-20 Sales and Marketing. Um, and he gives some examples of the hourly rates of certain tasks. Now, this book is a little bit dated, but you'll understand the concepts immediately, which is, you know, when you look at running errands and cold calling and building uh, stuff on your website and doing expense reports, like those kinds of things, that's low value activities in your business, much more so than doing something like, you know, building a sales funnel or working on your USP or your unique selling proposition or negotiating with qualified prospects, right? Uh, here's a couple more examples. You know, are you, are you, are you, uh, you know, cleaning, are you cleaning? Are you, are you working on like, you know, uh, editing, you know, grammar, for a, for a post for your ads or or you or you like hiring team members and and running a team and and you know doing those kinds of things so you got to really kind of look at this um, in a in a very very substantial way to allow you to kind of move through that um, it's very very important I want to try to review real quick we talked about starting to understand the purpose of business a little bit more it's there to serve your life we talked about kind of some of the things involved in that. We talked about creating a business as an asset. We talked about some of the benefits of the stages of maturation. We also talked about time, right? And what you should think about doing in your business. That's become much, much more apparent. That was just a little primer as we move into the other sections of the other days. Um, but I want to talk about business vision. The business vision is something that we said before. It stems off of your personal vision. It's an extension of that. Hey, I hope you really enjoyed that segment from the Business Builder Workshop. I know it was just a small glimpse of what the business event was like, but hopefully you got a grasp on some of the value that we provide. Listen, if you want to join us at a Business Builder Workshop, whether it's a virtual or in person or a Get a Life Getaway, go check out lifeinner.com slash upcoming dash events. Or you can just go to lifeinner.com and you'll see a list of the events there. This is where we take people through all of the facets of running a successful business. We help you create your business vision. We walk you through the four stages of business development and maturation so that you're focusing on the most important bottleneck at each stage of the business so you can move forward through your business and reach different levels of profit and success at each subsequent stage. Most people totally misdiagnose mm -hmm. the real problem in their business, and we help people figure out what the real problem is. We talk about marketing. We talk about sales. We talk about profit. We help you understand key metrics in your business to be successful. We, talk, we start talking to you and teaching you how to, how to move yourself out of the driver seat uh, of your business where everything depends on you and you're pulling all the levers and how to create a real business that doesn't require you to run it. We talk about AI, we talk about automation, we talk about hiring and running a team, like A to Z, soups and nuts. This is how you create a successful business. And we have those events all over the country as well as virtually. And so I'd love to see you in an upcoming event. And by the way, Peter and I teach those events. So if you've been enjoying the podcast and you'd like to get more of that, and that we are, this is the place to go. Now, by the way, if you been hating the podcast and it's been terrible for you <laughs> don't this come you're stuck go. with us you're right. stuck with us so yeah. listen go to lifeinner.com to find out more hope you enjoyed the episode and we'll see you next week everyone take care